We accept everyone of all abilities. So if you've never kicked football before, you're welcome to join us. Mm. We have something for you. So we have social sessions that women of any age can come along to and, and try, even if you just want to keep fit, make friends. Like It doesn't matter that you've, you've never kicked football before. Or if you've played at that top level and you want that competitive team level, like we've got that as well. So that's something I think is unique to us in comparison well, to... It puts a massive things. smile on your face when you talk about that. I know that. you can see right now you're right, really happy about it. Completely <laughs> beaming, like that, that part of giving back. Welcome to Rooted Within with Lily and Dan, a podcast that shines a spotlight on positive change makers, sharing their stories of legacy, inspiration and impact. Good afternoon, Lily. I got, oh, in, you got I, in there first. I got in there first. <laughs> Lily's always the one that kicks off the the podcast. I want to just do it myself. I want to shake it up a little well, bit. Good afternoon, Dan. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. We have another exciting guest we in do, our studio don't we? today. Yes. Are you going to remember the name? I'm going to remember. I'm going to throw it to you now. No, because well, <laughs> you, I didn't practice no, it. No, I went first, so you have to introduce our Georgia guest, Georgia Adderley. Yeah, you got it right. Well in done. the house. Good thing I was listening. <laughs> I really did that just to mess you up a little bit. <laughs> Georgia, welcome. How are you? Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for having. Me. It's amazing to have you here. It looks like you've um, been in the wars this yes, week. Yes, unfortunately, uh, a broken wrist. Um, I want to say it was something really cool, like, I don't know, something hardcore, but I actually was just doing a photo shoot for uh, a football photo shoot and I accidentally put my arm out and somebody kicks football and Ooh, it hit my wrist. Ow. Yeah, and it's broke. But I, if you look, I actually have tiny wrists, like they're like child wrists, so did, it's not did surprising. Did you realise it was broken at the time or? I mean, it would have hurt, I'm sure. <laughs> but it, it, de- it definitely hurt and my whole arm went numb and I was like, oh, I've done something. Then I, I was like, oh, no, it's fine, guys, we'll carry on. And then my friend looked at my arm, she was like, I really don't think you should carry on now, I think we should take you to the hospital Um, no but yeah it's um hopefully not too long six weeks in a cast but it's driving me a bit mental because i'm very active person are you a lefty or a righty so i'm right-handed and it's yeah it's my right wrist so it's a very nice cast though by the way thanks he gave me the choice of all the colors and i went for black so Uh, yeah i brought my leg once i had a green cast oh wow (laughs) but it was when it was when the um, it wasn't like a bright lime no bright lime green it was when the the colors came out for the first time like because normally it's like a big plaster cast it's horrible white. yeah and it's green anyway nice. we digress that sounds really cool <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't all the time well speaking of which you were doing a photo shoot for football yes mm, tell us more <laughs> about football okay so well i'm one of the co-founders of onyx fc so we're the first fully female owned football club here in the uae so and we're the only i would say real like women's club um most of them like you see sort of women's teams come together it's friends just playing like throwing on matching tops and playing um it's growing a lot more though and we see like girls academies bring in in teams but we just saw a bit of a gap for well, a, a women's were, club you just Massive woke up one gap. day and said gee i know what i'll do i'll start a <laughs> football, football club, club. <laughs> no do you know what it's we mentioned just off air earlier is about I'm a footballer and I'm like I actually would not call myself a footballer I I never started playing football till I moved to Dubai I've always been a really sporty person like very sporty at school like sporty kid but I never kicked football till I moved here and it was kind of a way to make friends and meet people and back then sort of eight years ago it was um right what can I do to make some friends in Dubai like similar age similar active interests and I was actually a hockey player and there wasn't much hockey here field hockey not ice hockey and I don't think there is any. So you just, as you mentioned, I've not seen anything. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about now, but back then there was, well, there was, there was really there was, nothing. Well, there, there was volleyball. I did join volleyball for a while. Plus and then got hockey. frustrated because the teams I was on weren't playing very well. So Are you competitive then? Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to answer that on Lily's behalf. Yeah, she's very well, competitive. Well, you know, if you're going to play, you want to play. Yeah. And like we, we had moments where, you know, you're standing there and the ball will come over and, and they just stare at it and look at each other. And I'm like, okay, this is not working for me. But let's take it back a little bit. Yeah. Because you you talked about, like, you know, you did sport in school. Tell us from then, I guess, from the early years. Yeah, so like I said, I've always loved sport. It's just, it was something I was good at as a kid, just naturally good. I remember my mum said she came to my first swimming gala and she was shocked that I could even swim the length of the pool and I was, like, winning all the races. It was just something that was, like, in in my blood and I, I loved it. I wasn't very academic. I was dyslexic at school. I really struggled with like maths and science and all of those things. But I was very creative and very sporty. So good at art and good at good at every sport. Basically, I was in all the sports teams. But 
I'm kind of a jack of all trades. I never really had like one that I was excellent at. I just happened to be good at all of them. So always played and then played throughout uni as well. And then, yeah, like I said, I, I moved here straight away after I graduated uni. So for me, it was like, what can I do to, to make friends and meet people in Dubai? And at the time, like I said, there was not much hockey. Uh, I wasn't sure about netball. And I found that there was a few women's football teams, but I'd never kicked football before. So I was a bit nervous to go, but forced myself to go along. And a few of the girls were there and there were some really nice girls and yeah I just got into it that way really and but were you naturally good at playing football because you said you've never kicked a football before no. but previously <laughs> you know you you excel in sport yeah so I played hockey which is a similar concept so there's the same number of players same size pitch but in hockey the ball can't touch your feet I so that's knew a, that. a key fact uh, key difference uh, so I knew the position quite well and I've always been very like spatially aware and I knew where I should be I just didn't quite know know what to do when the ball was at my feet um so that's slowly come over the years I still call myself a beginner footballer even though I you know own a women's football club and very involved in the game I'm still a beginner so it kind of just took years to build up and I'm still learning each week so what was that journey from you know getting into football into being a women's football club owner because that's a massive transition that's a big leap yeah so it came together through friends, really. So we're four friends. Uh, we all have different expertise, different specialties. I work in PR and marketing and I've worked in sports marketing and I, I love sport. I just think sport has such a power to bring people together and, and to do good uh, in general. So that's a real passion for me. And three good friends. So one of them, she's played um, professional football. So she played at the top level in Scotland for years. She's played Champions League. Uh, so she's sort of uh, got that playing experience. Uh, another friend, she's a UEFA licensed coach. So she's very much into like the coaching side of it. And then our final friend, uh, she's Emirati and really passionate about bringing... Uh, football to Emirati girls so the four of us had this kind of wow. passion a nice nice balance there I'm going to say such a dynamic like mix and different bit of a, bit perspectives of a, bit of a dream team there yeah, yeah so we're, we're a good balance definitely like I, I wouldn't call myself a football coach but um, I would say I'm a sports marketeer and I, yeah. I love that so we all bring something unique to the table for sure and we we said uh, well we'd like to play create a women's team but how did how did that come about you were you were you caught up you were having drinks you were out to dinner and one of you just goes oh I know <laughs> like how does that conversation yeah. come about so we all knew each other sort of through football anyway uh, women's football is growing here slowly and we we'd kind of played together they were both in much better teams than me I will put that out there but uh, I'm quite a social person so I knew them just socially and we, uh, they were talking about oh we'd love to do something by you know by ourselves set something up and I said well I want to be involved uh, mm. get me involved and then we got Hind our, our other partner involved and it it started from a very random idea and then here we are now two years down the line it's it's a fully fledged football club um it the women's football scene here is quite small it's still growing we work with the UAE Football Association which is obviously a government entity mm. and they're really focused on growing football here in general uh, particularly women's football so we've played in their league for the last two years it only started two years ago uh, so it's the second season we came second this season behind the only professional club here. So we're really oh. proud of that. Wow. Um, yeah, Abu Dhabi Country Club won it. So they're a, a professional team. So they pay their players to play, from what I know. And uh, obviously based in Abu Dhabi. And we are just um, obviously not professional. Uh, but to come second in that top league here it was, was an amazing achievement for us. And yeah. Because all, all of the players on the team have day jobs, yeah. other careers, and then you do this kind of yeah. out of work hours I guess yeah so it's, it's a hobby essentially for yeah. a lot of the girls but we do have some younger players who are really trying to be in the professional game so for them they want to play at that top level here in the UAE maybe they're off to go to university and or maybe they want scholarships and so on so for them it's it's more pushing into the game and then we've got women who have played professionally in their home countries who now play for us so that they've nice. maybe their PE teachers here now or different jobs and they've been from the professional game and now they're moving into a different career but still want to play so how do you build it so from the from the idea what was the what were the steps you had to go through to make it a reality yeah well I mean we're all legit we did everything properly and by the book so in terms of getting in contact with Dubai Sports Council the FA um, setting up the business as like a legitimate business so all of those steps uh, can be quite complicated here I, but we got through that I was gonna say, was that information ready uh, readily available or because you were one of the first female teams did you have to kind of start from scratch initially entered as an academy for the Dubai Sports Council so you have to be like registered have all of your insurance and all of those sort of documents in place um, 
But for us, we just wanted to set it up as like an actual business that could eventually become like a larger club. Like we're still very small. We only yeah. have four team members. But our dream is is the kind of bigger dream for women's football here is let's create professional clubs. Uh, so we wanted to do it legitimately from the beginning. We're not probably don't need all of the processes and systems we have in place, but we wanted it like set that the foundations. The exactly. Yeah. yeah. So everything, you know, we have brand values, a, a mission, a vision, all of these things that these big clubs have. We perhaps didn't need it in the beginning but we've found that it's really helped us like keep on track and keep going with with what we want to do for women's football here and what were some of the biggest challenges when you set the the club up well i think football traditionally is quite a men men male dominated sport so um there are barriers there and there are women's teams here and girls teams here but nine out of ten are attached to a, a men's club so, you know, the, the coaches are male, the owners are male and so on. And we found it actually limited a lot of uh, like Arab community mm, who the involvement. they don't want to be coached by men all of the time. Yeah. So we think that's our USP is that we're owned by women, we're managed by women, we're coached by women. Everything we do is with women and girls. At the and forefront. you're a fully independent team. You're not attached to anybody else. Exactly. Yeah. So. For us, it's we've got women's football and the growth of it as, as our focus. So and we want as many women and girls from all backgrounds, um, races, religions to, to be able to get involved here. And how does women's football in the UAE compare to men's football in the UAE? I don't know too much about the men's game here, yeah. to be honest with you. I think it's something that they're focusing on a lot as well and growing. Yeah. Um, there are certain rules that we have to apply um, in the leagues, for example. Uh, they're really trying to push like Emirates emiratization yeah. <laughs> in uh, in football so we have to have at least five emirati players on the pitch uh, at a time okay. in the top league here so obviously just trying to support young emiratis to get into football which is amazing i'm gonna say and how challenging is that though because i guess culturally mm. emirati women wouldn't necessarily be encouraged to go into sport or even football yeah i think we're seeing a big change in that we're seeing a lot of Emir- emirati women are interested in joining we get so many inquiries now uh, from the emirati community which is great and when we look at our girls academy so we have Girls as young as four up to 18. Wow. Uh, I mean, half of them are Amarati. So for that's us, incredible. that's huge. Yeah, it's really, really huge. huge for us. It's a big, a big USP. And I think they just love being coached by female coaches who have that experience and have that knowledge and that passion for the game. In the process of, of having, you know, the Emiratis and the local community involved, were there moments where you've had to, you didn't, didn't realize something needed to be done or culturally or any of that that had to be incorporated in? For us, we're always learning. You know, mm. we, we learn from each player. Maybe they've got a, a preference to something and it's something that we're very open to and we take on board. Even in terms of our kits, we try and provide kit that's appropriate for everyone. It can be difficult with um, with certain things and obviously some players like to play with a hijab. So mm. we're just trying to... We, we're actually sponsored by Adidas. So we work quite closely with them on the kit. And They've always been supportive, haven't they? Yeah, and, and actually I want to give a shout out to them because mm. they do amazing things locally yeah. on the ground here for such a big global yeah, they really brand. Do. They mm. do amazing yeah. things for sport in general, particularly the women's football game. They're really trying to grow. So even things like pro- providing hijab for those who want to wear it um, while they're playing. And you mentioned that the UAE um, authorities are sports people are interested in growing women's football how do you see that growing into the future I guess from a UA perspective but also from a personal perspective so I think we're very much in the foundation stages there's a lot of work that needs to be done I think to grow women's sport here in general not just football uh, so I'd love to see more investment and, and more time go into this it is something that the FA are definitely investing in and, and we've had great conversations with them to support them on that journey as mm. well so for us as four co-founders we're really passionate about that it's something that for us it's it's not just a business you know we want it's a greater good uh, we want to make a difference in the community and and make all women feel that they can come and play football so I think for us another USP is that we accept everyone of all abilities so if you've never kicked football before you're welcome to join Mm. us we have something for you so we have social sessions that women of any age can come along to and and try even if you just want to keep fit make friends like it doesn't matter that you've you've never kicked football before or if you've played at that top level and you want that competitive team level like we've got that as well so that's something I think is unique to us in comparison to puts a massive smile on your face when you talk about I know you can see right now you're really happy about it beaming like that that part of giving back yeah, is, it seems to be quite important to you. Yeah, and honestly, it's a passion project more than mm. anything. You know, this isn't my my full time job, but it really is a passion and wanting to give back and wanting to grow something here. And 
women's football across the world is, is growing. When we look at, we've got the Women's World Cup yep. happening this mm. summer, which is really exciting. I think I'm going. Yeah. Are you going? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh. So um, a really good friend and colleague of mine is working with FIFA. So yeah, Amazing. she's invited me down to the final. So yeah, I'm going to go. Well, if you have a spare ticket, you know where to send maybe, it. <laughs> maybe, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I think it's Australia, New Zealand. Mm. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be incredible. And I think it's going to be the most competitive Women's World Cup we've seen. Well, I'm going to say on that note, because recently they announced that they've increased all the prize money um, to try and make it at least a little bit fairer in terms of how it's distributed and the representation for, for women. But it's huge. They're making a big effort to try and get women's football to an equal standard I guess, as men, yeah. men's football. I mean, it will take time. But Yeah, I mean, even if you look at like the increased like, uh, the television that we're seeing putting on the, the football games, particularly in England, we've got the Women's Super League there and they're playing now some of the women's games when the men's stadiums are free, they're playing them at the men's stadiums and, and they're selling a good amount of tickets so to see that interest in the game there like in other parts of the world we just hope that we can bring some of it uh, here to the UAE and the wider region as well I was going to say like go go 20 years in the future what's what's your dream what's your vision for the league for the team we just love to see opportunities for all girls and all women in, in the region, not just here in the UAE. We, we'd like to start with the UAE, but when we look at um, the immediate region like GCC and Middle East, like we think that there is such a gap in the market for women's sport in general. And we just want to bring those opportunities uh, in any way that we can. Mm. So we're very supportive of, of, sort of the growth of women's sport here. It's not just about Onyx FC. It's about how can we actually support uh, the region to, to grow and have these opportunities. What is, what is the scene in the region? for women's football I'd say it's very small especially yeah. when you compare it like I'm from England and, and women's football has been growing there probably for the last five to ten years mm. it's, it's grown massively especially recently because I think England are European champions yeah so I got that right I didn't even well know done. properly but yeah <laughs> I did a bit of research yeah so the England Lionesses won uh, the it. Euros so that yeah. was huge and uh, we, we actually saw here a huge interest in, in people inquiring to us which was amazing to see even there's so many expats here obviously they were supporting their home countries and then to have that interest from young girls particularly to join us which was mm. amazing so I think even that uh, you know was in England but it's had an impact on people here and yeah so we just love to see to see it grow in general and more opportunities for more girls to get involved and it's more about staying fit and healthy and like mental health I think we're quite a way away from like a professional league here but I think the the work that the FA are doing to to try and start something is is great and hopefully we can just build on that. Because you mentioned mental health, and that's something which has kind of come up in many of our topics mm. um, from discussion. I think it's just so kind of relevant to where we are today. I guess, like, how has football or, you know, maybe some of the people that like, come to your, your sessions or to your team, you know, how do they benefit in that regard? Yeah, I mean, it's something I talk about a lot. I'm a big believer in the link between mental health and physical health mm. and how it's actually just yeah. your health. Even for me with a broken wrist right now, I've really seen the impact of not being able to move as much as I usually would. I play a lot of sports, not just football. So for me not to be able to do basic things has actually really affected my mental health. And I think it's something that people don't speak about enough. Mm. Uh, people are starting yeah. to, which is, is great to see. And especially in the world of sport, when you look at professional athletes, I'd love to hear professional athletes speak about it more, like the impact of getting injured and actually mm. not being able to do something you love. Because it must be huge but you don't hear about it in the media yeah you hear about it a lot more I think in women's football than you do in men's football there's a lot of differences there there's a lot more openness I think because it is a smaller game even you see the connection between the player and the fans uh, mm. is often quite a lot closer uh, there's obviously smaller crowds so they have the opportunity okay. to interact but yeah, mental health is, is a huge topic and I think being active and, and playing a sport can be really positive for anyone. And from Onyx, for example, we have girls who even just want to come and make friends. You know, the UAE can be quite a lonely place yeah. if you move here and just getting to connect with different people, all nationalities, like we've got 55 plus nationalities now wow. in the club. So yeah, just to come and make some friends and, and do socials and meet people is again, like an impact on positive mental health. I remember my dad always said, if your mind's not good, exercise yeah like that. Yeah. He, always, he, he always yeah. said that and it does it does make a difference yeah. and then to add in the layer of you know dubai can be a lonely place to to have sport help yeah. with that mental health aspect of it like indirectly like it's not just you know you yourself and sport 
Yeah. And I think sometimes maybe if you are in a low place or you're struggling with your mental health, mm. probably the last thing you want to do is is go for a walk or go and play a sport. But actually, it's probably going to be the best thing, thing for you. Yeah. I think coming together with people is also really important, which is why I love team sports. Like I play golf, which obviously isn't a team sport, but um, playing football and just being able to come together as a group of girls that like we have social sessions every Monday. And it's just like all girls all from all backgrounds, all nationalities coming together, basically having a laugh and playing some football. <laughs> Well, you're I'm creating think... a community, aren't you? Yeah. You're creating, you're creating a safe place. Community well. is a, a big word that we speak about all yeah. the time. That's actually probably our focus. Like, obviously, we want to be competitive at these top levels, but that's not really the focus for us. Mm. It's really creating a community and a safe place for women to come together. Pretty incredible. That's nice. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> that, that's a pinch me moment. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. You talked about, we talked about mental health, but also physical health. Because as you came in, we were talking about the fact that you're a type 1 diabetic. Yes. Has, how has that impacted your involvement in sport? Well, it's, it's hugely impacted it. I've, so I've got type 1 diabetes. I've had it since I was 11. Um, and I think people sometimes get confused between like type 1 and type 2. So type 1, essentially, in very simple terms, means that your pancreas doesn't produce insulin anymore. Yep. So one of your key organs stops producing uh, a hormone I don't know actually if insulin is a hormone. We'll have to check that. But it, it stops producing insulin, which is something yeah. you need to break down food. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I've had that since I was 11. And there's how been. Did, how did you know you had that at 11? So, there's certain symptoms that people should look out for. Um, I lost a dramatic am- amount of weight. I was very thirsty, um, mm. very dehydrated, um, urinating often. It's your body trying to flush out the excess okay. sugar in your blood. Um, so, it's definitely something that people should look out for, uh, especially people with kids between that sort of age, like 11 and 12. When you're about to go through puberty, it's quite a key time where people realize that they've got type 1 diabetes. So, um, I mean, there's lots of information online. I'm, I'm not a doctor, but no, just, for, just from my experience, yeah. um, I was quite quite ill and I got admitted to hospital and and uh, luckily they they found out quite quickly and I um, I now take insulin every day so I have um, insulin injections I count everything that I eat see how many carbs it's got in it and then I have injections based it's all on linked that. to your phone as an app yeah, so I, I, I have uh, what's called a CGM, which is a, con- a continuous glucose monitor, and yep. it's linked to my phone, so it tells me what level my blood sugar is at. So if we hear an alarm go off right now, it might be out of range. <laughs> and, and that tells you that you need to, your, your insulin's low? or uh, So it, it either tells you your blood sugar might be too high or too low. Yep. So if your blood sugar's too high, you need insulin. If it's too low, you need some sugar. So I carry little fruit juices around with me that has sugar in. So. And what happens if you go too far either way like it's quite dangerous it's, right yeah i mean it's very dangerous um if you are in if you have hypoglycemia which is li- low blood sugar for too long you can go into a coma um and also the same if it's too high for an extended period of time it's it's the same so it's it's very dangerous i think people don't realize the uh you know the impact it has and again it links to mental health i, I yeah. know a lot of people speak about um speak about that because it's but it's burnout from continually mm. having to act as your own organ and uh, my boss who you know abby her yeah. son uh, he's only young he has type one as well so we're, we're very close about that and managing a child running around having having this um, autoimmune disease is is crazy so there's a big impact there but going back to your question about sport and the impact it's had for me every time i play football my blood sugar shoots up okay and apparently there's some sort of medical link it's to do with like glycogen being released from your cells and the adrenaline and excitement of playing and it's it really has impacted me, and and sometimes I actually can't play because of the the impact that it has. But again, it's also helped me in other ways because it's helped me get that healthier lifestyle, healthy control of of my blood sugar as well. And what are those kind of key things you can do to have a healthier lifestyle? I think it's just moving, isn't it, and just eating as healthy as just you can diet. as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I, particularly with type two diabetes, I, I know that often type two diabetics can go into remission if they have a healthy lifestyle and um, you know are active. Type one, you can't; it's just one of your organs is stopped working yeah. essentially. Um, but of course, being healthy and active can, can help with that. Is is type two the one where you can you get it in adulthood? It's no, it's not. You can get it's, it anytime. It's more there's, common. There's, there's one that when you get later in life, it's to do with having a bad lifestyle that causes the diabetes. I, yeah. So right? type two diabetes is usually because there's a strain on your pancreas, okay. so it's slower at producing insulin. So yeah. whether that's from you know being obese, being overweight, being unhealthy in other ways, yeah. and old older age, yeah. um, sometimes just the impacts on your organs. Whereas type one, it's um, basically your organ just stops working. Um, okay. They don't know why. Um, there's different theories, but it's, I just say. 
say it's bad luck. Um, nobody else in my family has it. I got it randomly when I was 11 and I've, I've been living with it since I'm 29 now. So. so when no one else in your family has it, so when you found out you had it, how did that make you feel? Oh, it's very isolating, obviously, yeah. and it's a huge life change, uh, having to just change every single thing that you do. And at such a young age. Yeah. And especially, like you said, you were, you were into sport quite a lot when you were younger. Yeah, it had a massive impact. And back then, the, the medication mm. and all of that stuff has come a, l- a long way since then, but I do at least five injections a day. I continue. Is it the EpiPen ones? Um, yeah, that, it's like a small little... small needle. Um, but let's say you have three meals a day, right? There's yeah. three because you have, let's say you have a bit of carbs with each meal. I have one every evening, so there's four. And then let's say I eat one other thing in the day or I play sport, there's five, at least five. Interesting, I eat- my mis- well, misconception was that it was like one insulin injection per day. I mean, I'm, I don't want to say like medically for everyone, no, but for, for me and for a lot of type ones, they either have an insulin pump or injections. Wow. And uh, my, yeah, my uncle was diabetic and the fridge was just filled with his medicine. It was yeah. just like all his and then but he was he was hilarious. He would literally be sitting at the table and like he was he's Middle Eastern, so he'd he'd be wearing his dish dash and he's just sitting there and he pulls up the dish dash and just, you know, stabs himself and we're like, Okay, <laughs> right. But could we talk pretty briefly about the app? So you have the so I can't remember what it was called. CGM it's CGM. Called, yeah. I mean that was revolutionary. Like it must make life a lot easier than what it used to be, I guess. Yeah, How's so it different. For me, it actually changed my life and it helped me with playing sport as well because before I had to prick my finger to get the blood, blood and, test. and check and everything. test the levels. But um, initially, I didn't want one because I am I like to look nice and I felt like it was an additional thing that was like stuck on my body. I just felt like a robot. And for those that might not know what it is, it's like a circular microchip that goes on the back of your arm. Yeah, it's, yeah it's like a medical uh, device that's just attached to the back of your arm. It usually is it lasts- implanted? There's there's a small um, like plastic thing in there. It's very small and it lasts for two weeks. So then okay. you change and you change arms. Um, but for me, it, it really impacted me and it meant that I could have a better understanding of what my levels were and how different sports and different things I did in my life impacted my blood sugar. But it also gave you a safety net. Yeah, I mean, it, they're great now, CGMs. They have things like alarms. So for example, like if I'm asleep and my mm. blood sugar goes really low, I can get an alarm and I can I can wake up, uh, which obviously wasn't there before. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing, especially, for, I think, for people with young kids. it's It takes the weight off and the pressure off of having to go in in the middle of the night and, and check their blood sugar. You can just look mm. at your phone and see. And uh, I actually am working with a client called Dexcom, which is like a real-time CGM. Uh, okay. it's, and they're just about to launch here in the Middle East. And... It means that you can look at your phone and you can see what, what your blood sugar is. So say, for example, you've got a kid, uh, he's at school and you want to just see if he's OK. You can just look at your phone and see, even though he's at school. The ease, not the ease, sorry, the peace of mind that well, that that's will provide the, thing, like, the parent. That safety net. Yeah. You yeah. know, that because I had a, another friend of mine, her husband was diabetic and we were in London walking down uh, Regent's street and he started acting really weird just saying silly things and i i didn't have that much experience with diabetes i had no idea you could go into a coma and i just looked at my friend and she started to panic and she's like we need sugar we yeah. need to get sugar and i'm just like what she's like he's gonna go into it like if we don't do something he's gonna go into a coma and he'd he'd gone loopy yeah. completely loopy and he was like arguing with her and uh, sounding like a child and i literally ran down the street went into a pharmacy you know they were kind enough to just give me some lucasate this that and the other we went into starbucks got him a sandwich and called the ambulance and stuff and sort of calmed wow. down. But until the moment that she, I saw her face, I had no comprehension, none, that yeah. it was that dangerous. So to have a mechanism like that, yeah. wow. Yeah, it's, it's life-changing. I think obviously there's so many things that people deal with. Like this is just like one autoimmune yeah. disease. And it's something that I've just always just got on with. It's kind of like the the English like stiff up a lip yep. thing. Just get crack, crack on. on with it. Like yeah. my mum and dad just sent me off to school. Go and play sport. Get on with it, honey. You'll be fine. Um, and, and But yeah. honestly, it's, it's definitely helped me have a positive mindset in life. And going back to mental health, I think having that appreciation for life and yeah. just um, getting up and going out, even if you don't want to do it, just forcing yourself just to go and do something just because uh, life is short and you never know what's going to happen. And do you find that now you can pass that on to, I guess, that mantra on to other people now which are joining your team and creating that positivity and, you know, encouragement? Yeah, definitely. And we, we see girls join us and they've got their own things going on, their own yeah. problems. And we just want to say, like, we're welcoming to all. You can come here and just be yourself and have a safe community to be a part of. So, yeah, I mean, anything I can do, small things to, to help would be great. What's next? 
Oh, I find this question so difficult because I'm a very busy and ambitious person. So yeah. it's like, what is not next is my answer. That's a good answer. Um, yeah. uh. <laughs> I just think anything is possible. You know, if you'd have said to me sort of three years ago during COVID, you're going to start up a women's football club and you're going to be sponsored by Adidas and you have all these things going on, working it with the Qatar World Cup. I'd be like, no, you're crazy. What Hold on, you, Qatar yeah, World yeah, Cup. Yeah, hang on. What did you do with the Qatar World Cup? So we're obviously sponsored by Adidas. We have a great True. partnership with them, which is really exciting. So all of our kit is, is Adidas. Uh, we do a lot of events and activations with them. So they're obviously a, a key partner for, for FIFA. FIFA. And uh, for the FIFA Qatar World Cup, which obviously happened last year, we had the FIFA Fan Festival, which was on Dubai Harbour. Oh, and nice. Adidas had a little Al Rihla arena yeah, in so. And it was a football pitch there. So we were doing activations on the football pitch, um, fun things like skills challenges, 3v3 matches. And the audience could come down and take part and win like Onyx merch, Adidas merch. Um, so it was awesome. So even just doing that, we did that for the whole of the World Cup. And so it was when, you were, when you were standing there doing this, like you said, three years ago if you wouldn't have imagined that this was happening when you were standing there and this is happening how how did it make you feel i think when you're in the moment you're just so caught up and like doing a good job and just yeah making and, it happen and when the dust settled well i think when the dust settled probably in january i went on holiday and it had been a really busy few months it had been the world cup we'd done so many football activations in the run-up to that and then the whole month we did something every single day and then and then it was like the madness of Christmas and New Year. In January, I went on holiday the first week and I sat down and I was like, wow, I can't believe we actually did all of that. Like, it's crazy. So I s- sat down and wrote a diary about it because I thought, I actually don't want to forget anything we've done. Yeah. And we are a small business. There's only four of us. So to, to be doing these great things and involved in these huge, like, productions by Adidas and FIFA was just incredible. So but also shifting, me- shifting, you know... Culture and shifting perspectives. Perspective is so but much. You're, you're changing. You, without sounding dramatic, but you're changing lives. You, yeah. you genuinely are. Like those those girls that may not have had an opportunity to do this before, being able to do it because of what the four of you came together to create. Oh, well, I mean, wow, that's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> that must be quite empowering, <laughs> but you know, because you are. Yeah, I mean, for us, we're all about female empowerment. I yeah. mean, I speak about it mm. every day. I'm like, come on, women, female empowerment. We just want to see more women, like, taking the reins a bit in, yeah. in more traditional um, things like men's football. Mm. It's Even in men's football, I'd love to see more women working in that game. So yeah. I'd love to see a female manager in the Premier League, for example. I'd love to see more women on the board um, at some of the big football clubs. exist. Yeah, the only person, I'm sure there's more, but the only person that I really know um, is Karen Brady yeah. at she's West Ham. Mm, and she's yeah. like, she's such an inspiration uh, to me personally. I, I'd love to be following her footsteps. Well, there you, well I was going to say, there you go. That's what's next. We're going to see you up there. Yeah. <laughs> Work your way there. I'll be with Karen Brady on the nice. board on the of board. West Ham. <laughs> uh, let's manifest it, guys. I Make appreciate it. Well, you know, well, you or she could, might be on the board uh, of your team moving who forward. Who knows? Or even better. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Why stop there? We're open to it, Karen, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> does regularly she, she writes in um are you gonna do anything for the women's world cup yeah so unfortunately i don't think any teams from this region actually qualified so i think there was not as much sort of excitement around it but obviously i'm from england i'm supporting the england lionesses so we'll be doing a few things we've got a few plans um for activations just for women to get involved yeah. maybe they get inspired by watching one of the games they can come along to some sessions and what's the lionesses chances Honestly, I think they've got a really good chance. This okay. is the best chance I think they've ever had. Um, they they just won a couple of nights ago against Brazil. Um, they also have won against the USA. I went to watch that at Wembley. Because the USA is a big women's Very team, huge. I think. Yeah. They're going through a bit of a change period. Um, USA, they had a few um, rich people retire. They've got yeah. a few new players and young, young players, 15, 16. Some of the youngest players we've seen come into the, those international squads. So... They're going through a bit of a change. I think England are really playing well at the moment. I just, I don't want to jinx it. Touch wood, guys. But <laughs> I think this is a, they've got a really good chance this year to, to at least get to the, the finals. Well, you know, we'll all be tuning in then. Of course. <laughs> right. George, that's an incredible chat. Thank you so much. It's Thank really inspiring you. to hear your story. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. And uh, Lily, we'd love Keep to welcome inspired. you down to a session. Oh, I'll, I'll come down. Oh, I'll come I'm down. coming down to I watch this. I have two this. left feet, but I'll come down. I'll yeah, take that take, challenge. They take people no problems any in, yeah. ability. In, empower me away. Yeah. I'll be down there. Done. I just want to see your sports kit. Dan, Dan we'll, get, we'll, get you, um, we'll, we'll get you a kit from Adidas. There We've got go. an amazing purple Onyx kit. See, we'll get you one and, as a cheerleader and now, as well. And I, I, I make a very good cheerleader, And now I way. can't back out because it's on air. Of course. Yeah. No, if, I'll be there. Done. If anybody wants to get involved, how do they get involved? 
Well, we're pretty social. You can reach us on social media. We're onyxfc underscore on Instagram. Um, so just reach out to us. We also have a website, onyx-fc.com. And yeah, everything's on there, but we're very like contactable. We've got email, WhatsApp, and I just recommend coming down to a session, come and meeting us. You really get a vibe for it when you're there. Come, come down and see me uh, play. <laughs> yeah, you want some entertainment. Be Lily's going to be there. Be there. <laughs> um, one last question. Why is it called Onyx? Yeah, very good question. Okay, so we had a few name inspirations, but we ended up on Onyx because Onyx is actually a black gemstone. Mm -hmm. It represents like strength, um, sort of community coming together with people. We also thought it represented the black in the UAE flag, which... uh, I th- believe means defeating your enemies or is supposed to represent defeating well, your enemies. Now. <laughs> which we thought was quite fun on the football pitch, defeating your enemies. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's all about strength and sort of um, supporting one another, authenticity. It has a lot of meanings, the Onyx Gemstone, and that's where it came from. Ooh. Incredibly empowering. I like it. Yeah. We like it, I like it. Georgia, thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you on the field soon. On thank the pitch. you so much. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you.